the Alabama Woods, a channel of satire, comedy, and entertainment. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and if you don't, be sure to leave a comment down below so I can take that comment and make a funny video about what you said. Today we're going to talk about two videos that have been uploaded by their creator, Timothy Dixon. Now, Timothy Dixon is a self-proclaimed prophet. Uh, he has dreams. I don't think I've heard of him having visions, but he has dreams, and he has more dreams than all the prophets in the Bible put together. I mean, he has a dream just about every night, if not every other night, and uploads a ton of stuff on YouTube, which, with the algorithms, moves him up higher and higher. The more videos you create, the more the algorithm rewards you. So I want you to look at these two videos. Uh, I've got the picture posted here. But I want you to pay very close attention to the second one. The second one says that, that the prophet, that, that they have spoken this prophecy into existence. Now that's new apostolic reformation talk. They believe that you can speak things into existence. So the only one that I know that can speak something into existence is God. That's the way it's always been. That's the way it always will be. That's all we have in the word of God as far as who is the creator, creates with speaking. But these modern day prophets, they think that you can speak something into existence. Now, not in this video, but in another video to come, wow, I'm gonna blow the lid off of what he said about speaking things into existence. I almost fell out of my chair, literally, when he said that. So let's talk about these two videos here real quick. If you've not seen part one, you really need to go see part one because number two may not make as much sense. And I'm not just telling you that to get you to watch my videos. You really need to see the foundation to see what he said in order to see why he said it didn't happen. So let's get to the video. Probably one of the most interesting to me uh, people I've seen on YouTube um, was Timothy Dixon. <laughs> Timothy, I, I want to just open it up for you. What is the Lord telling you about this time? What you're about to see is a person who, I mean, aggrandizing is not strong enough for what you're about to see. This is pathetic. This is showmanship. This is embarrassing. Can you tell I'm not too fond of it? Yes, yes, yes. The Lord would speak to this nation. This is the hour of great deliverance. Yes. Now, if you've seen Dixon's videos in the past, you know this is one of his favorite statements. Hour of great deliverance, the hour of your visitation. Statements like that are nothing more than designed to get a response from the crowd or uh, act like, well, this is the way the Lord would speak. I mean, the Bible's written in the King James language, so surely when God talks to his people, it's in the King James language. This is, this is nothing more than designed to rally the crowd, and it worked, and that's part of what's so pitiful, and we'll talk more about that later. But listen, listen to actually what he says, and every time he has some false prophet speak, I'm gonna put FPS on the screen, and every time you see that, pretty soon, when you see it and you hear what he says, you'll understand, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, he is using false prophet speak. For my hands is reached out across this time where Satan has stood up through the laws of the land to try to destroy the revival that springs forth in this hour. But know that the spirit that raises up in this place today that I have marked this forth, this day has a day of coming out, a day of 
awakening, a day that my word comes forth like a fire and shall set forth across the nation and shall bring to pass the words that's been spoke and prophesied, saith the Lord. Folks, right here, all he is doing is saying, thus saith the Lord. You can trust all these eight false prophets on the stage because the Lord's telling you you can across the country inside the churches the churches shall start ringing the bells again and revival shall break forth across every continent and every nation and my spirit shall not my people he said my spirit shall not and then stopped and then said my people and went on with another sentence so let me ask you brothers and sisters the followers of the prophet Dixon, could God not complete that sentence? I mean, God is infallible. He can carry on a complete sentence. He is the master of all languages. And even though we tend to think that God speaks in the King's English and so does Dixon, because you know, that's just what we think because that's the way we read the Bible. God may not speak the King's English and definitely Dixon doesn't speak it. But why did he stop there? It's almost as if he lost his place or he wanted to say something else, but there's no continuity between this last sentence and the one he started, which tells me he is what we used to call in the assemblies of God in the flesh. The Bible talks about prophets speaking what's in their hearts, not what comes out of God's mouth. And that's what's going on here. What he's doing actually is he's preaching to you. He's preaching what he wants to happen, and he knows it will rally the crowd. He is not prophesying. This is not prophecy. And all you little Dixon sheep may not like it, but that is the truth. This man is not prophesying to you. He's preaching. Shall no longer be called the reproach, because my spirit shall rest. I've chose this hour for the standing of the prophets that stands today. And you'll see, even as I've spoke through them all, that this day I'll have my fireworks. This is in reference to the last video, part one, where he talks about God is going to change the atmosphere and he's going to fill the atmosphere with his fireworks, which would be comparable to modern day American Fourth of July fireworks. He said it in that video. Go back and watch it. But it didn't happen. And he knew it wasn't going to happen. So now he's trying to cover it up and make it out that it was something different. Now, in another video, which you're going to see in, in this one, another one of his videos, if I have enough space, you're going to see why the atmosphere wasn't filled with God's fireworks like he first said. I'll have my day, saith the Lord, for it has begun. I shall drown all the enemy, saith the Lord God. I shall bring forth this word. God's going to drown all his enemies. Hey, uh, folks, I don't know if you know this, but the Bible says there's not going to be another flood. Next time he purges and cleans the earth, it's going to be by fire. But according to the prophet Dixon, God told him or speaking through him, however you want to say it, and God said, I will drown my enemies. That does not match up with the Bible. Folks, do you hear this? Do you hear why this man is disqualified from the office of prophet? This does not make sense. This is not God speaking. This is a man who preaches. He can preach. He can sing and play the guitar. He is not a prophet. Okay, I would have just cut the video, uh, his upload, because it's just more prophet speak and more aggrandizing, and I can't bear to watch that embarrassment. Um, so let's watch the, the second video I showed you in, in that, that picture uh, that talks about how uh, the, the prophets have spoken this into existence. And let's see why what he predicted in the first video, part one, Let's, let's see why that didn't come true, because would you believe God told him why it didn't come true? And he's supposed to tell you, and you're supposed to believe it. The Lord had spoke 
before we had ever got to the meeting on the 4th of July in Nashville with the Let Freedom Ring. And the Lord had specifically spoke out of several of the men of God and prophets of God that he would have his display. The Lord would have his fireworks. And last night, uh, I got home kind of late uh, on the trip coming back from Nashville. And uh, we had stopped and done a couple things, but uh, the Lord came to me last night in a dream. And in the dream, he told me, he said that my fireworks, my display of my power was sitting on the stage in Nashville, Tennessee at the Grand Ole There it is, folks. This prophet wants you to believe that God, through him, told the world on YouTube that the atmosphere was going to change that God was going to create a modern day fireworks display of his glory. And then it didn't happen. Then this prophet has another dream. See, because you can't say he really didn't have a dream because you're not in his head. But he had another dream explaining why the first dream didn't happen the way he first said. A prophet does not get to come back once his prophecy doesn't happen and cover it up and say, oh, well, you just didn't understand it. It didn't happen in a way that you thought it would happen, but God explained it to me. Oh, he explained it to me, and now I'm going to tell you. That is pathetic. But today's New Testament prophets, they don't have to have 100% accuracy. And all the little sheep out there looking for a sign who loves these false prophets, they don't care about accuracy. All they want to hear is the next time for him to say, Trump is coming back to office. The Lord said, that's what they want to hear. And I know why. Because they're beat down and they feel like they can't get a victory. But here comes a guy who tells us victory is ours. And so we're going to latch on to it like a leech. And we're going to throw all discernment into the wind. And we don't care if he's not accurate. We're just going to watch the next video and like it because we like what he says. This is pathetic. This is not prophecy. This is a scandal in modern day Christianity. And it is, a, and it is shameful because the Bible clearly says that false prophets who do this kind of stuff make it harder for people to get saved because they look at this and, it, and they make a mockery out of God. God. God ends up having to look at them like they are Sodom and Gomorrah. It's in the Bible. Maybe you should read it. This is pathetic. This is not prophecy. This is showmanship. Here's the thing. Once he becomes famous, he can scrub YouTube from all this stuff. And now you can't go back and then realize this man is a false prophet. But I'm telling you he is. You mark my words. This is not prophecy. This is an embarrassment in this era of Christianity. All the, the men of God that was on the stage had no preparation at, as, as if what was going on. And if you've noticed, the prophecies and the prophets, the prophecies that walked out that day, the word of the Lord backed everyone up. Uh, you know, in the word of God inside each, each, each one's soul and heart. Well, of course they did, Mr. Dixon. Do you think that uh, eight false prophets of God are going to get up there and contradict each other? That would be insane. Why, you'd never get invited to another false prophet conference again. Of course they backed each other up. I wouldn't expect anything less than that. You think that adds some kind of legitimacy to what you do? You ever heard of one false prophet ratting out another false prophet? Doesn't happen. In fact, what they do is they come together and they feed off of each other. Look, you, you could see 
Benny Hinn doing it, Kenneth Copeland doing it. You could see all the big timers doing it, and now you see all these little timers doing it because they've learned. It's What he just said is supposed to give legitimacy to what went on on that stage. Now, I'll be honest, it's over four hours long. I'd rather stick a pencil three inches deep into my ear than to watch four hours of false prophets backing each other up. I would projectile vomit and ruin my television. I can barely watch these videos in order to try to warn the true people of God what's going on. See, the Bible says that I am supposed to call out the false prophet when I see one. I don't judge your heart. I can't do that. I don't know if you're saved or not. That is God's decision. But when a false prophet raises his head, Mr. and Ms. Christian, you are supposed to point him out. And that's not what's going on in America today, no sir. You like to have your ears tickled. You love hearing how Donald, God's going to put Donald Trump back in office. He might. What happens when he doesn't? Will Dixon and the other seven make excuses? Well, you know, at the last minute, God appeared to me in a dream and told me Donald Trump really didn't want to be president and God's not going to go against what Donald Trump wanted. Watch the excuse. If Donald Trump does not get in office... Watch the excuses the next day. Go to everybody's website. Mr. Dixon has a website. It's a nice looking website. That's where that picture came from of him that I showed you with his hand up and all that stuff. I've been to his website. He'll tell you how all his prophecies come true. Hey, folks, prophets shouldn't have to tell you that his prophecies come true. You should see it happen. You should be able to carve it in stone and know it's gonna happen. He shouldn't have to thinly say, listen, he had one that said that uh, uh, tsunami and meteors was gonna fall down on Italy. There was an angel that appeared in uh, Vatican City or in Rome, and he had his, his wings stretched out, and meteors were falling down. And, and Mr. Dixon goes through and tells how the meteors and the earthquakes and the tsunamis and all that's gonna wipe out Italy. And then he puts a pathetic little video trying to explain, well, there was a little volcano erupted in Mount Etna, which is in Sicily. It's a region of Italy, a little technicality, but it ain't Italy. It is Sicily. It is autonomous. It has its own government. But yet he puts that out, and the sheep just think, oh, my gosh, look at that. A volcano blew up. It erupted in Mount Etna. Sicily. Google it. Google map. Google Earth, rather. Look at it. It's not, on, it's not even on the landmass of Italy. But the sheep don't care because you know why? Shh. Donald Trump is going to, I know my bird even says it's ridiculous. Donald Trump is going to be back in office and the people love it. He's tickling your ears and you love it. Where's your discernment? Where's your maturity? Some of you are not baby Christians that are believing this hogwash. You are mature Christians. I know what it is. You want to see it so bad. You want justice. You've lived your life in God all these years. And it just seems like the evil ones get whatever they want. And now when a prophet of God comes along and says, hey, they're about to get theirs, you just love it. Shame on you. You should not want anyone to get what they've got coming to them from God. You want mercy. You think your sins are small and theirs are so much bigger. Oh, Pelosi, she's going to get what she's got coming to her, and you love it. Shame on you. You want mercy? You should pray that God has mercy on Pelosi and Schumer and Biden and Hunter and Kamala and Susan Rice and Obama. You should pray all of them get God's mercy. Because if you don't, how can God give you mercy? How can it happen? That's why you love to hear what these prophets say that talk about Donald Trump. Victory for God. The Christian wins one now. Listen, you're not going to win anything on this earth. The Bible says you will be persecuted because of God. It ain't happened yet in America, but it's coming. And then what are these prophets going to say? When you're trying to find, you're trying to buy bologna at 10 bucks a pack, and they're living off donations, eating steak and lobster, do you think they're going to give you some? No, they're not going to. They're still going to ask you for what you got left. They're doing it now. The old people that just write these checks to these false prophets because they think they are building the kingdom of God, planting a seed. Shame on all of you. You better hope that you don't die suddenly.
and you don't have time to ask forgiveness. You better hope that you're able to lay on a deathbed and reflect on what you've done with your life and you can ask forgiveness for this heretical teaching, speaking things into existence, prophesying them into existence. You're not God. You can't do that. But you'll make other people believe it. Shame on you. You're adding to the Bible. You're adding, you're adding to what God did. And you are not God and you don't have that right. You should be ashamed of yourself. All right, folks, that's all I'm going to put in this video. Um, I got to go take some aspirin. I appreciate you watching. Uh, my channel is not just about this. You know, that I do camping and bushcrafting and survival and we talk politics and all that. I tend to make videos and then don't like them and erase them. So um, it's, they've been slow coming through. I've enjoyed sharing some time with you. Come back again. Uh, maybe this was funny to you. I hope I tried. I mean, I tried to make it funny because it's so disheartening. It's disgusting. But more than that, I want somebody who are believing in these false prophets, I want you to realize there's no shame in saying that you were hoodwinked. Just realize it and stop it with these guys. None of them are legitimate. They might be saved. They may be the ones that God says, away with you. I never knew you. Didn't we prophesy in your name, cast out demons, heal people? Makes no difference. God bless you. We'll see you again on the Alabama Wizard.